Hi there. Have you ever wondered about the mastering track in Hindenburg Journalist or Hindenburg Journalist Pro? Maybe you've wondered why you would want it, what it's for, or, why, or how you might want to use it. Well, in this short video, we're going to talk about that. This question came up in a Facebook group that I run. You can find that at hindiusers.com. That'll just take you right to that Facebook group. And we were talking a little bit about using a mastering track, who does and who doesn't use it, what you might want to use it for. So I thought I'd just make this really quick video. We're going to talk about how to add the master track to your montage video, some of the things you might be able to or might want to do with it, how it's different from a regular track as well as how it's similar, and then we'll talk specifics about how I tend to use it, which might be different than how other people tend to use it. So first off, I'm going to add a master track to the montage window, then we'll talk about what it is, all right? So I, I have up here several tracks. This is the intro for an up upcoming episode of my show, The Engaging Missions Show. What it is is actually not that relevant, but that's what it is. So I've got some voiceover, another voiceover, another voiceover, and then I have some music underneath it. The names are not updated, but that's what they are. So to add a master track, it's almost exactly the same as adding a regular track. I'm going to click this little drop down on the track, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it up here so we can see it a little bit easier. I'm going to add, instead of hitting add a track, I'm going to add a master track. And that's going to add a master track. Now we're going to take a look at what it has. So we have a volume slider. We have the balance or the pan. We have a drop down if we wanted to add or delete a track. And then we have some effects, so some plug-in inserts. Ways that it's different, it doesn't have a record button. It doesn't have a mute or a solo. Now, why is that? Well, to talk about that, we're going to go back and talk a little bit about what a master track is. As you might have guessed from the name, it's a master track. If you were working on a physical mixer back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, even now, you might have a whole bunch of individual tracks, and then there's one final track that's the master. It has the master volume, any master effects on there. That's exactly what this is. You might sometimes call hear it called the mix bus. You might hear it called the the master channel. You any number of those things. It's all basically the same thing. You might even hear it called the summing channel because it's where it brings in all of the sounds and sums them together. Now, why why might you want to use something on the master track? Well, that's if you want to apply some kind of effect or some kind of change to everything within your mix. As you can see right here, I have several voices, I have some music, and I have them all mixed together, kind of like blending something together. I have them all mixed together where I like the way they sound together. But if I wanted to make some kind of change that impacted all of them, rather than having to change each of them individually, I would do that on the master track. So as an example, if I wanted to change the volume of everything, I would do that on the master track. If I wanted to change the balance or the pan, I would do that on the master track. That's one of the ways you can use it. If you get all the way done with your, your mix and you say, you know what, I like how this sounds together, but eh, it seems like it might be a little bit loud or a little bit soft. You can bring that volume up or down within reason and you can help mix that together. What I really like to use the, the master track for is applying mastering plugins and a lot of people are going to be doing this. There's a reason I like to do this in the master track. We'll talk about that in a minute. But mastering plugins are basically just effects that I want to apply to everything. And I have a few that I've I have from Isotope. I have Ozone 7. And I like to use these, but you don't necessarily have to use these particular plugins. You just need to think what are the effects that I'm wanting to apply to everything. I have a tendency to like to apply a multiband compressor sometimes an exciter, sometimes a tape emulator, sometimes an imager or a maximizer, any of those things based on what I'm wanting to do to the whole mix. So I like to have a multiband compressor because it compresses each of the frequency ranges a little bit differently. And that allows me to dial in the sound so that if the mid-range gets a bit heavy, I can bring that down a little bit with that compressor without over-compressing the air. So the, the stuff above, say, 10 kilohertz, that kind of thing. I can leave all the air in there, but I can compress the mid-range parts of voices. So that allows me to get a, a little bit fuller volume without losing that sparkle on the top end. And I do that kind of thing with some of the other plugins, just based on what I'm trying to do, because in the end, what I'm looking for is a smooth mix 
that has a little bit of life and vibrancy to it, that has a little bit of sparkle. Uh, sometimes I might tighten up the stereo imaging just a tiny bit if I'm working in stereo, but those are things that I might do with that. If you're not interested in those things, no worries. You don't have to. That's what I tend to use it for. But that brings me to what I think is the power of doing this. See, I have Ozone 7. You might have some mastering plugins or a mastering tool that you really like. And so when you're done with your mix, you have to mix it all down. Then you send it over to your mastering set where you start applying the mastering things. And then from there, you can export it and convert it and you're, you're ready to go. With Hindenburg, because I'm running this on a master channel or any, any DAW where you're running this on a master channel, you can apply those effects as part of the chain. But when I do it in Hindenburg, I can do a mix down that applies the mastering effects that I'm looking for and then automatically sets it to the loudness target that I want using their volume matching. And if I really want to go there, I can, <laughs> I can run the mix down, apply all the effects, set the volume, convert to MP3, add all of the meta tags and publish it straight to Libsyn or Blueberry or wherever it is that I'm publishing my final mix down, I can do all of that in one step if I want to. And that's, that's one of the really cool things that I like. It's a way that you could potentially really speed up your workflow when you're editing and working and mastering in Hindenburg. Truth be told, I tend to leave the final part of the MP3 and the ID3 tagging for later. But that's an option. That's not something that I do, but I really like being able to do the mix down, apply the mastering plugins or the mastering set, and then do the leveling all in one so that I can then take that and, and move forward. If, if you found this valuable, I really would appreciate it if you'd share it with somebody else, especially if you know somebody who's wondering, what's that mastering track for? Or how can I maybe speed up my workflow a little bit in Hindenburg? I'd appreciate it if you'd share this with them and also give us a thumbs up. If you liked it, make sure that you take a minute to subscribe. And if you like Hindenburg or Hindenburg Journalist, and you would like to connect with some other people who do as well, visit hindiusers.com. That'll take you right to our Facebook group. We would be glad to connect with you. We have a wide range of experience, a number of people in there, everything from absolutely absolute beginner to professional audio people in that group. And we're glad to offer what we can answer questions, provide insight and recommendations, any of those kinds of things. And also, if you have a podcast and you'd like to have some help with your production, whether recording or editing, visit Top Tier Audio. That's where I can, that's a website that I have. And I'd be glad to help you with some of those elements of your podcast production. That's toptieraudio.com. One more time, make sure that you share this if you found it valuable. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll make sure that you don't miss any new episodes. And until next time, I'm Brian Ensminger with Top Tier Audio and HindiUsers.com. Let's speed up our editing and our mastering in Hindenburg.